So in this chapter, Health and Medicine, we'll get into medications, different types of medications and how they work, traditional medications like aspirin and ibuprofen, but also drugs. There are legal drugs like caffeine, and this is the structure of caffeine, and we'll be getting into these more complicated structures of organic molecules in this chapter. And then also illegal or illicit drugs like marijuana and how that works in the body. There's also drug development and how new medicinal drugs or pharmaceuticals are developed. And we'll spend a little bit of time on the latest medications being used to treat coronavirus. In looking at more complicated molecules that are organic compounds, they'll be quite different from what we've looked at so far, which are inorganic compounds. So inorganic compounds like these elements, compounds, and even putting together elements and molecules and compounds in a mixture, these are really small compared to organic compounds. So you might have one, four, two atoms bonded together or even mixed together several different types of atoms. But for the organic compounds, this is a lot more atoms bonded together. So what they both have in common is that there are organic compounds and inorganic compounds in human metabolism, so in living or organisms. But inorganic compounds are pretty much all the elements in the periodic table and their chemical reactions, and that's what we've looked at so far. And organic compounds really only focus on carbon. So organic com compounds are carbon containing. There's also some other atoms. Hydrogen is the second most common atom in organic compounds, so we've already seen those hydrocarbons. Also, some other atoms from the periodic table, like nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and phosphorus, but it pretty much just focuses on carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So that's what we can see in this molecule here. Carbon is shown as the black atoms, hydrogen are the white atoms, and then the red are the oxygens. So this is a pretty big molecule compared to these smaller molecules, these individual atoms, and even the different components of the mixture. But these, there's a lot more variety in inorganic compounds. You have the other 100 plus elements in the periodic table. In chemistry, organic means carbon containing compounds. And so in food, the chapter we just finished, organic was food raised without synthetic pesticides or synthetic fertilizer. So organic in chemistry is carbon containing compound. And organic chemistry is the study of carbon containing compounds. I mean, you can spend a whole year taking organic chemistry, or you can have a whole career based on organic chemistry. How can there be so much to study with just the element carbon? So carbon being the main atom, carbon has a lot of variety. Carbon has the ability to bond in many different ways, either with all single bonds or incorporating some double bonds or triple bonds. Though organic chemistry focuses in on just carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and a few other elements, these variety of bonds and the fact that you can make so many bonds in an organic molecule that you have hundreds of atoms bonding together. Living things are all carbon-based because carbon can bond in so many different ways, providing many different possibilities of complex structures because of the fact that there are hundreds of atoms that bond in an organic molecule. There are over 12 million organic compounds. Studying the formation of all these different types of organic compounds, that's what organic chemists do. Organic compounds are covalent molecules, which again is different from a lot of the molecules we've talked about so far, which are inorganic and ionic compounds. So covalent molecules have chemical names, and this is an example of methane. That's the hydrocarbon, the first in the alkane series, mother eats peanut butter. So it has one carbon. The chemical formula, also similar to inorganic or ionic compounds, the chemical formula shows the element symbols and how many using subscripts. So we'll also look at condensed chemical formula or a condensed structural formula. 
So a structural formula shows the atoms and how they're bonded. Now that's also similar to what we've looked at so far. The structural formula is also the Lewis structure. So this is the carbon atom with the four bonds to the four hydrogens. And this is the Lewis structure, the two-dimensional shape. But the ball and stick model shows these atoms in the molecule as three-dimensional. And this is the three-dimensional Vesper shape for a central atom with four bonds. It's tetrahedral, indicating the colors where carbon is black and then you have the four hydrogens as white atoms. The space filling model is the most realistic molecular view where these atoms are smooshed together because remember that's the covalent bond where the atoms electrons are shared so the atoms no longer have their individual boundaries. This also shows the colors of the carbon atom and the four hydrogen. So carbon has a lot of variety. It can form four bonds that are either single bonds, double bonds, or triple bonds. So there just needs to be four lines coming out of carbon. So four single bonds or if there's a double bond then there needs to be two single bonds. And then if carbon has a triple bond, then there needs to be one single bond coming out of it. There can also be a double bond on one side and a double bond on another side, as long as there are four lines coming out of carbon. So we've seen this before with carbon dioxide molecule. Now hydrogen forms only one bond. Only one single bond is possible, and that's because hydrogen has the duet rule. It can have a maximum of two electrons, and that forms the bond and becomes stable. Okay, so that's a covalent bond where the electrons are shared in this bond. Nitrogen can form three possible bonds. So nitrogen can form single, double, or triple bonds, and this is a nitrogen with three single bonds, or a nitrogen with a double bond and one single bond, or a nitrogen with a triple bond, okay? And this is, the nitrogen has always a lone pair of electrons, and so that's why nitrogen obeys the octet rule in forming these bonds. The octet rule will have a maximum of eight electrons. These bonds will be shared with other atoms, but this is nitrogen begins with its five valence electrons and then shares electrons in these single, double, or triple bonds. But the main thing is that nitrogen has to have three lines coming out of it, just as carbon had to have four lines and hydrogen has to have one line. Now oxygen forms two bonds, so there needs to be two lines coming out of it. Oxygen can, oxygen can form two single bonds, or oxygen can form one double bond. And we've seen before what oxygen also has is two lone pair electrons. And so oxygen also, like nitrogen and carbon, obeys the octet rule with a maximum of eight electrons. And so that's why oxygen forms these bonds um, because it begins with six valence electrons but then gains two more in sharing electrons in these covalent bonds.